what's going on stop number five bass master elite series starts in the morning we're rigging up right now but we're going to do kind of a little recap video of what i did on lake murray and lake santee cooper some of the same stuff going down at both places even though those lakes are extremely different but first it is member week at shop carl's so this video is sponsored by shop carl's so go check it out they have two new baits they're dropping four members only they've also got eight baits that are 50 percent off but they're having like a scavenger hunt so that you got to figure out which baits are actually 50 percent off so pretty cool but they also have where if you place an order of 50 dollars or more you get a mega saving bundle so go check it out it lasts from the 11th to the 18th at carl's fishing and outdoors so now we're about to jump right into lake murray and santee cooper so i actually kind of found fish doing very similar things on both those lakes and the main thing about that is when I went into Murray, I had kind of a tough practice on the first day of practice. I don't think I caught but two or three fish on the first day of practice. Realized that I was way, way off course. So I ended up starting to ride around, troll down the bank, look for fish, saw some spawning, saw some swim around on points, stuff like that. So really showed me kind of the areas of the lake that the quality fish were in. And even though they were very difficult to get a bite, that's where I really wanted to spend the time when I was fishing the tournament. So I knew that if I could just generate a couple of those bites a day, I would have a really really good tournament and i was able to do that on the second day and third day i was able to get some of those really good bites but on day one i had to lean all on bed fish <clears throat> still had a really good bag i think i had 18 something on day one maybe but caught all five of those off bed i believe all five of my weighed in was actually off bed so kind of jumping around every single day of the tournament it was weird kind of how those fish are so fickle that when you pull up to a place Sometimes you just catch the biggest ones up there. Sometimes you catch the smallest ones up there. Sometimes you don't get a bite. Sometimes you catch three. So really the way that I was doing it was I was kind of milk running the place where I'd seen fish and then mixing in bed fish and some of the times of the day where I felt like there was not a major feeding window. So I caught bed fish every single day. I weighed in a couple of bed fish. I want to say the first day I weighed in five, the second day I weighed in two, and the last day I weighed in two. So I was kind of mixing it up. I was out there use a forward face sonar on that mid-range stuff to see those fish that are outside on those points kind of when they're not actively busting on herring you can see them out there over some of those points i was able to catch some of those every day on a wacky rig and as crazy as that sounds out there throwing that bait to some to these fish they're not sitting very deep you know even though you're way offshore a lot of these fish are in three four five foot so not something that's you know really thought of as a forward facing sonar technique but the fish were shallow, so I just threw it out there to them. I was able to catch some on that, caught some on a swim bait, and then all the rest of them came off the bed. So went straight from there back to back to Santee, and it looks completely different. But <clears throat> I thought that Santee was going to be my favorite fishery that we go to on the Elites this year. Murray's going to be tough to beat because that place was, as far as largemouth fishing goes, never seen a place in my life that has more three-plus pound fish. I couldn't catch many of them. But I see them swimming around like crazy. So, I mean, the smallmouth places we go to, you see stuff like that. But as far as largemouth go, you just never see that quality of fish everywhere that you turn. But we went to Santee. Probably got more seven-pounders in Santee than any other lake I've ever fished. Like, it seems like every other person in the weigh-in line has a seven-pounder. So, it's just crazy. I was lucky enough to catch one of those fish on day one. And I caught it very similarly. I was using forward face sonar. And I caught a 660 out of a brush pile started off the day had, had a tough practice on santee too actually on the very end of day three of practice i went in one little place and i saw like six or eight on bed so i decided to go there and start so i pull up to the first like four bed fish they were all gone so i pull up to another one that i thought was a three pounder and i catch it and it was a four pounder so then i throw a wacky rig up to a tree and i catch like a 575 so then i found a new one on bed caught it caught a fry garter <clears throat> went back to another bed fish caught it and then I got lucky and found a brush pile and ended up catching a 6.6 out of it. So on day one, I had 23 pounds. Day two, I really thought those fish were leaving the bed extremely fast. And I felt like that mid-range kind of brush and grass, eelgrass, stumps, all that type of stuff, I felt like that was going to play. But I didn't practice the right way for that bite. So I was trying to, during the tournament, run around and find that mid-range stuff. And it's very difficult to do because them lakes are so big and so flat that finding the sweet spots is very tough. So I wasted a lot of the time on day two actually I think conditions changed on day two <clears throat> conditions everybody. really changed on day three that's when it got really tough uh, was it day three yeah that's when almost nobody caught them down there but on day two i wasted a lot of time trying to locate fish but i knew 
that I'd already had enough to make the top 50 cut early in the morning on day two. So I was really trying to gamble knowing that where there's so many five to seven pounders out there offshore, even though it's only eight or nine foot deep, I was willing to gamble and get out there and try to do that and did it. So I only ended up weighing in four fish on day two because I wasted a ton of the time actually trying to find productive water and I couldn't find it. So day three, similar thing. I really stayed with it and struck out big time on day three. Only weighed in four bass for six pounds and 10 ounces. So I was in fifth after day one, then I fell to like 15th, then I fell to like 42nd. So 42nd place after being in fifth on day one. Not happy about that, but I feel like I did what I should have done to really make a run at winning. You know, like I feel like those fish were moving out there. I just missed them by a little bit and was not able to find those five to six pounders that, that are all out there. But a lot of guys did it. A bunch of guys that went into the area that I went to would catch two of those big ones a day. And it seemed like everybody was struggling to catch five of them a day. Like it like people were weighing in two and a half pounders, but they were have like a seven and a six and a four and have 24, 25 pounds, but then they'd have some two and a half pounders. So they were all out there around. I just wasn't able to dial it in, but that's how it goes. You Sometimes you gamble and it don't pay off, but hopefully we gamble this week and it does pay off. But so that's, what was your top three baits? Top three baits. I only needed two. A wacky rig was number one, and then bed fishing bait, that's kind of, doesn't really matter. Any kind of crawl that's white, quarter ounce weight, tungsten, five alt gamakatsu straight shank, and that's it. I think I only weighed in bass on two baits on both of those. How do you feel about life? Hope I catch them on two baits, but I'm going to tell you, it's been a tough one so far. So hopefully tomorrow we land on front and, you know, on top of a couple four or five pounders. and That'll make it look like you really know what you're doing. But after practice, it's really, really tough. It's going to be hard to catch a limit. And a big bite is going to literally make your week here. Like you catch a five pounder, you're pretty much going to get a check. It's just, it ain't like that most places we go. Here, there's a bunch of them big ones in here, but ain't many people going to catch them. So Have you ever done well here? I have done well one time here. What I've only fished doing? I've only fished three tournaments here. It was really cold and I was fishing I don't wanna say what I was doing. <laughs> but it was really cold and I was doing something a lot different. But anyways, I actually that tournament I caught one off bed. I think it was the last week of February. I caught four doing something and then I caught one off bed. And it was like last week of February. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Hopefully we'll uh we'll Are you fishing beat the that same record. area? I'm not going to fish the same area. Not very much anyways. I might go in there, but I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to fish the same area. I'm going to fish a lot different. You think forward facing sonar is going to mean a lot this week? Not for me it won't, but for a lot of people it will. That's it. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Time for lay.